Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. Looks like we're seeing. Cool. I even gave you guys some like lean back distance. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a huge yeah, relief. Really, yeah, 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 I can get some room stretch bit. out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll Slide screen. We'll have a good posture the whole time. There you go. There you I'm go. not at all. I'm trying to lean back the whole time. Big posture guy. Big lean out here. Just chilling. Just chilling. Just chilling on the pod. I mean, you know, you, uh, uh, you, like, you, know, you watch me. You know, first beer, we're up here. Second. Third. You know, get a little more comfortable. Ten on that. <laughs> you know? Ten, we're at the pan of hammer down a little bit. Yeah. The internet makes a meme out of you. Like first beer, <laughs> second beer, third beer. Me meme culture. They make like angles, like going back to. <laughs> Be funny. Should I introduce you guys? Let's do it. Sure. Cool. So DJ Hickey here. On my What's left. up, guys? Your right, I guess. Austin Miney on my right. Your left. How we doing? I think that's. Would that be your? That's the camera's left. It's definitely my. I, I don't know. I don't know. What Is it way. flipper? Yeah, I don't know either. Which perspective are we on? I, Jordan's subjective perspective. Jordan's subjective perspective. You knew that? You knew that? Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> That's the way I'm seeing it right now. I'm on the left. Mine's on the right. right. We'll figure that out later. It's all one big subjective uh, perspective. Yeah. Just just one big old subjective mm -hmm. perspective. That's how it is. I've been told that sounds like a Migo song. There you go. Subjective perspective? <laughs> sounds like something they would do. That's for sure. Choppy lines right there. Subjective perspective. Oh, yeah. I mean... Yeah, you need some triplets out of that for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Definitely. So, Definitely. Look, I feel like I'm I'm curious now. So, I think this should be the starting talking point because I'll just be it'll be in the back of my head the entire time. Why do you turn your beer cap to the left, and why do you turn yours to the right? So for me, first of all, it's it's something that he got me into. It's called the game of life. Uh, I, I'll let if he wants to go into what it is, I'll let him. But. Uh, for me, I threw with my left hand pitching, so I always turn my beer cap to the right. You know, it's just something, I don't know, it's just weird. And he either does that weird thing with his beer can like that, or he turns it to the left. Yeah, so for a beer can for me, I'll turn the tab to the left either, because I'm right handed. So if I drink out of the right, turn to the left. It's all about balance and symmetry. I mean, it's all it is. Um, or I'll put it in the side there, which is a tip I picked up from my, my, uh, my roommate in college. Um, you know, it's all about airflow, so it kind of takes away the chug of the beer. Yeah. So, you know, so it's he, just a smooth flow. He mixes it up. I stay consistent. I'm to the right every single time. Never change. So you, you can do both. What? How do you get it in there like that? So, so there in the beer tab, like you'll have like those prongs at the top. Uh huh. Yeah. So like those prongs are like well, essentially what you're kind of cut the side of the beer with. You just put it. What do they stick out though? Yeah. Like yeah, you can feel them. Yeah, those little things right there at the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you take that, you go to the side of your beer, kind of wedge that in your finger, you go to the side of the beer, and it just sticks right in. That's incredible. I I, I'm not figuring this out at all. I've never tried it because I don't look like an idiot, but I mean, it's tough <laughs> to do. Like, it That's what I do. It definitely takes some finesse at first. Should I keep trying? Or? So it's it's all about the right entry point, and this one's not stuck in the beer. But try it sometime, man. Like, okay. You know, and then it just makes the beer. I think it's one of those things. Got to be a couple beers deep the first time you do it, you know. And then it just kind of comes natural after that. But Motor learning. It's like beer pong. With beer. Yeah, beer pong, flip cup, with everything, dude. It's better with beers, you know. Tasks that you can get better at while drinking. What? So let's open that can of worms. Okay. Uh, beer pong is the obvious one. Definitely beer pong. You know, like I. I feel like the role of beer, like the role of alcohol in that situation is to like turn the brain off. Like, I mean, in like real fine tasks like that, like your brain will just, you know, think way too much. So like, I mean, you have two or three beers and like your game just increases cash money. Like, um, for me, it was always a study beer, dude. Um, I don't know about you. Study beer. Study beers were awesome. Learning, if you had a big task the next morning, slow a couple beers down, you know, I felt like that always helped me. Comprehend knowledge better, does really over oh, the lodge at Linwood, <laughs> the, uh, the old Linwood. <laughs> studying in an old hotel room, man, putting down a couple beers that I snuck in in a backpack. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's that's what it was about right there. So I had some friends in college. I'm not sure if this is actually backed by science or not, but they said mm. your brain functions better at like a, a BAC for like 
well, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure the BAC of, like, 0 0.03, like, you remember, like, small details better or, like, you re retain information more efficiently or something like that. Where I think me and you had a drunk and talk about this one night, this exact conversation. So it's kind of, like, counterintuitive. Yeah. Like, so, like, if you, everybody thinks, like, alcohol messes with your memory, but if you have a little bit of it, it's actually good for your memory? To a certain degree, and I'm not sure if that's actually backed by anything. Uh -huh. it, it, it could just be some, you know, some bar talk, but... Yeah, it could be. I feel like it has some merit, like, you know, like the same thing with, with playing beer pong, you know, like it, you know, it helps the shot. I feel like it, it could help, you know, it could, you know, block some some stress or some anxiety, you know, like, like about like a big test. Like you're like, all right, mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm drinking my beer and now I'm just going to... You know, study some physics or something. You know, it's 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 what all the Silicon Valley guys do. I definitely you know? think Let's, that's, 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 that's definitely what Frank Gallagher would do. <laughs> Frank Gallagher. Would Frank do. Gallagher would <laughs> definitely have a couple beers before doing anything. But Lip Gallagher. I mean, the dude's a genius. Functioning alcoholic. Great role model. <laughs> something like that. What is that? Shameless, shameless. You ever seen Shameless? No. Oh, oh, I thought this man. was like a, I don't know why I thought this was somebody you guys knew like personally. No, 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 I wish I knew him personally, but I don't. Okay, so you're talking about the grandpa, right? Not Frank, but yeah. yeah. Okay, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. It. yeah, fr yeah Frank's the dad. Yeah, iconic, iconic guy. Dude, what was Frank's like famous quote? Like, "Yo, I'm a cockroach. You can't kill me. <laughs> I'll just keep coming back from the dead every time." Frank's like a cockroach. I don't know. something like that. I don't know. You have to. That's one of my favorite fictional characters, honestly. I just I, didn't know his name. Yeah, he's a Frank. I, I feel like there's so many Frank moments where, like, you think, all right, a normal person would be dead in this situation. Like, they're, like, they're, like there's no way he can come out of this, and then all of a sudden, the next episode pans, Frank's still alive. Like, the dude was on hospice for crying out loud. Yeah, like, like the dude, two weeks later, later, was getting drunk. I mean, it's Frank. insane. But anyway, what a guy. Well, actually, one of, one of freestyling, for sure. If you guys have ever tried like, drunk freestyling, I can't do it when I'm sober at all. But I did it one night, partially successfully. Like, I'd give myself like a 5 out of 10. Drunk freestyle. Drunk freestyle. Okay, so was there like an actual mic, or was it just like a group of friends? or a group of friends. We crammed in the back of the car. Just turned on some music and just went in like rotation. My buddy was actually good at it, so I had like his lead to follow. Mm. And then uh, I just kind of went with, kind of went with it and tried to freestyle. And I was, I, I surprised myself. I'll say that I was better than I thought I would have been. Okay, I, I would attribute that to the alcohol. All right. So what kind of rapper were you? Like, uh, I mean, do you have like your one-liners, or are you more like wit, or just like a Short choppy flow, or you know, describe the flow for me. I'm a young stunner that would catch you <laughs> off guard. I catch you off guard with my uh, with my with what I'm gonna be spitting out of my mouth. So I guess I guess a little bit of wit, a little bit of uh, bullshit, a lot of bullshit. Actually. A lot of bullshit. This is the man right here. <laughs> a lot of bullshit. This is the guy. So yeah, that was probably my main ingredient was bullshit and just trying to make it all flow together. Yeah. But definitely a young stunner. Definitely a young stunner. We'll have to get drunk together, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see this. Maybe add in some verses. We'll see. Hey, maybe more, a few more of these. We could try some freestyle. We'll see where this takes us. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we, need, you know, we need like a bell, like a ring bell for beer. You know what I mean? I know we got some people downstairs. We bring them up. <laughs> just start, just start like kicking on the floor until they come up. What? Like, <laughs> we just wanted some beer. That's all it was. Beer. Yeah. That's funny. Well, uh. What, what should, I mean, I feel like we have so many topics and they're all just like scattered throughout on this piece of paper. Should we just hop into one? Should I just like... Dude, we can hop into literally any of them. That's fine. Okay. Men and menstrual. Why is the word men in menstrual and menopause? I'm going to let Mike take this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to... i got to be careful. I'm sure i you know, got a girlfriend who's going to watch this, but I'll let my take this one out. Well, you know, I think that's bad branding. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, it could be the medical community. Um, whoever it was, that was a terrible job of branding. Like, you, like you dropped the ball. Like, 
you know, you were completely inclusive the wrong way for genetic or for biologically what's happening. <laughs> so that was a terrible take. Like, that was horrible. Why would you do that? Uh, That's the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Like, you had one job, man. Like, you literally had one job. Um, but And it was to not call it after the other gender. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely can't. Ass- I mean, I, I guess they weren't assuming genders. You know, they like, like like they weren't trying to define any gender roles. I guess you know. I mean, in 2019, I guess a a man could have a menstrual cycle. I mean, who knows, right? PC, PC. That's all it is. PC principle. Apparently, making it pregnant now, men or there's now men birth control now. Apparently, they're working on it, something like that. I male saw male birth control. Male birth control, yeah. I thought that was called just like Mountain Dew, you know, and they say it like, I don't know. It kills the sperm count? Yeah. Ugh. No, apparently, I mean, this could just be Facebook bullshit or whatever, but I've, I've seen some, or I didn't read them, but, you know, I don't know. Some look up, sure. Definitely. It's either Mountain Dew or a bisectomy. I'll, I'll stick to Mountain Dew, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's throwing out a wild card here. We don't know what, like, you know, so like think back in the day when like people were thinking like they were getting radiation from like the microwave and stuff and mm-hmm. that would like cause some weird stuff, like things to happen in the body. Think about like the effect of our phones just being in our pocket all day, especially uh, I mean us being dudes like you know, you've got your phone sitting in there in your pocket right next to your sack like right there. Like is that going to cause anything? Like should we be concerned about this? Like should we wear some kind of uh some boxers that have like some anti signal blocking or like what's the deal? Like aluminum boxers or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've thought about that. I've thought about that too. That's funny you say that. I, I I don't know. I don't know. And that's the thing. I don't think anybody knows, right? Dude, no one does. Like, there's so many things in our world today that we have no idea how they're going to affect us in 10, 20, 30 years. Like, we're in, a, yeah. we're in a wild west. Just like the people who, you know, are elderly now and dying of causes, you know, they didn't know that. It was going to kill them when they were 20, 30, 40. Hell, cigarettes were like... That was encouraged. That was the yeah, thing to do. Cigarettes were like, oh, you're like you're feeling stressed? Have you Marlboro Red? It's gonna, yeah, it's, it was... It's, it's going to relax you. Totally acceptable back then. I mean, shit, you'd be 14, 15 years old. Yeah, dude. It's ripping a cig, you know? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, cr- it's crazy the way that our interpretation of science, or what is science, changes every couple years. The antidote became the cause of all their problems. That's that's vaping now. Like I think vaping's very relevant to like we all know what's gonna happen like X amount of years down the road. Amen to that. We yeah. definitely don't know like yeah they say oh it doesn't have the carcinogens but uh well what does it have? Like we don't know. We have no idea. Vaping man. Those I jewels could. are so popular. I can't even lie. Like I, I hit them down at school like a fair amount. Those flash drives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Are you smoking a flash drive? Who said that? What <laughs> is that? I never did. He whipped one out of his pocket. Somebody really said that. Those flash drives? Well, I'll be smoking those pussy sticks. <laughs> when, those, when those things first came out, it was so fun. So, you know, South Park had like a big thing about like the jewel epidemic and. I mean, it was hilarious. You got like these kindergartners, like the the biggest customers of of, <laughs> of like the jewel game. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, didn't they ban them or like ban some of the like flavors or something? I think they have a reduced now to like three flavors, and they're like really basic, so it's like way less desirable. Mm-hmm. I, I think that like a big part of that was to like get middle schoolers off of it, because like I have a buddy, yeah. his younger sister, she's like seventh grade or something, and she he was saying that his younger sister had like a ton of her friends were jeweling like in school even that's crazy it's insane that's crazy yeah i mean i do a little substitute teaching right now and they have them dude i'm oh, sure i'll go to a high bathroom. school bathroom and uh you know there's smoke or whatever it smells like and peach it, mango man. yeah <laughs> <laughs> three kids in the corner of one stall and all ripping their jewels but i mean yeah it is yeah, what it is i mean Personally, I, I I have had a jewel and I I I I quit now for a couple months. But I mean, those things hit you with a ton of nicotine, like a ton all at once. It, it's, it's 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 something stupid. Like one pod is like the equivalent of like a whole pack of cigarettes in terms of the the like the, nicotine. Yeah, like the density of, 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 of nicotine. It's crazy. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. like uh, like like they are so potent. Like I mean, you know, during my my baseball career, I I chewed and you know, like you get a nice you know buzz from it. But uh-huh. I mean, 
dude, 20 cigarettes in like one pot and I didn't you know, like, that. I mean like like some people will go like a pot a day like that's a ton or, or more like, yeah, like you're getting a super condensed hit that like yeah you don't know what that's gonna do uh -huh. that's nuts that's nuts and you get desensitized to that like over time too yeah absolutely it just crazy was having thing. an effect on you at points yeah then you gotta take I mean what was I mean like just see all the videos online like Oh, your mom hits the jewel and then like she <laughs> coughs her brains out or something. Oh man! And then like, dude, I mean that's crazy. And then eventually like it's it's not, you know, it's one puff and then it's two and then it's three and then you got to do it for like a whole sitting and then, dude. I mean, you do it for a whole not, sitting, and you still feel nothing. And you're like, oh yeah, I feel regular. Like, that's crazy. That's so crazy. And like the feeling is just so elusive. Like it's like it's here, it's here, it's here, and it's gone within like two minutes. That's crazy. Like that's I'm not a big jeweler, but yeah. Pretty much just like the best way I can describe it, it's like a very strong nicotine buzz, which is, I don't even know how to describe that. It's like, it, it's a desirable feeling. I mean, it's like a head rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah very, yeah, well said. And then it's like here, it's like that. It's like a big roller coaster, just going yeah. straight up, straight down. And when you think it through logically, it's like, this is really dumb like this is really dumb but like whenever you're like feeding for it or like really desiring one or really wanting one it's like like you're not thinking logically it's weird it's yeah. like I don't know because I I'm, I'm a, I didn't get like super deep into it it's like in comparison to a lot of people but like I I got into it enough to where I felt that addiction like that addiction feeling yeah which is it's a crazy feeling it's like I'm not thinking rationally like it's like I'm I, I like the feeling but I and I want it or I want it, but like I don't even like the feeling anymore. It's like all habitual. It's weird. It's really weird. That's exactly that how weird. I am with caffeine, man. Like, I'm, you know, I am a a caffeine addict. Like, I will drink coffee. You do love your caffeine. I'll drink yeah. coffee every single day, and I will feel weird if I don't have it. Like, I, I I just won't feel sharp. I'll feel just, you know, just off. And like, I have to drink coffee every day, and that's just something that I mean. One, it's. I mean, it's expensive. It's either like I have to buy coffee every day, or you know, like you know, brew my own at home. But like, that's something like I can't go a day without. Like, it, mm -hmm. it's I mean, it's crazy. And like the same thing for addiction and anything. Like, it's something yeah. that it just starts off like, oh, like this feeling's nice. Like I want to do that again. It's like a perfect you know metaphor is the jewel or whatever it is. Like it's just a coffee because you're like, oh, like I had a more productive day than I would have. Yeah, exactly, and it just becomes part of like your identity, part of you know like a habit. I mean, I mean, that, I mean that's all it is. Like it's a habit. Like you wake up and you want to feel good. Like you know, no mm -hmm. one likes to feel tired, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and I feel like there's so many things that are so easy to get addicted to. And you know, think about like, like a kid. You know, when you're five or six years old, like like you have your first soda, like you bounce off the walls. Like it's such a foreign substance to your body that that you know you like you feel such a crazy effect from it and then you know like the sugar wears off and you fall asleep and you crash but like then you're like hey if i drink another soda i'll like be super energetic again and then it just builds like for everybody and then that becomes part, part of like a habit and i mean you know these big companies will 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 fiend off that like they will you know cash in off you know like the way the body will want to feel good it's yeah, it's crazy. I always wonder how much they have that stuff like down to a science. You know what I mean? Like, like how much are they actually manipulating us to like want something? You know what I mean? Oh, it's, oh I guarantee it. It's it's way more than we know or that we can quantify without being inside the business. And like a a perfect example is a uh, like think about social media and like the way the apps are constructed on our phones. Like, you know, there's certain people who are they're completely crazy about like you can't have the update thing on your phone like you can't have the one two you know like um you know like three notifications there on like the top of the certain app because like you want to make that go away like yeah. it's satisfying to make that go away i'm one of those people and, man yeah, i can't exactly. have that red little circle on the no. top corner of my app it bothers the hell out of me but no you, like you can't do it and like these app developers they have come out and said like hey like the best people in the world that you know design apps and social media and technology like they're the best in the world at what, at what they do so their job is to make you know Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat whatever it is their job is to make that 
addicting. Like they want you to come back. Like on a mass scale. Like we've on, never yes. seen before. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's, yeah. It's nuts. Uh, it's like really weird to think about. And you know, just like the subtle sound effects. Like I like the way that an app will transition from one picture to another. Like yeah, it's all the science that these people have figured out of like what gets people to stay locked into this app the longest. Mm-hmm. It's nuts, and they're the best in the world at it. Because I saw you post on Instagram like your daily usage or something like that. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I was like, how, where do you see this at? Like, where do you? Yeah, this? I guess now, now they, I love it. They came out with screen time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then screen cool. time I, and me, I actually became pretty cognizant of well, how much time. You, like when it first comes out, you're kind of mind blown at how much time you're really spending. And then, uh, you know, like he said, because your apps are, are in the same place as your phone. So sometimes mm-hmm. when you're bored and just sitting there. It's just like memory, just pick up your phone, slide over one time, top right corner, got Instagram, or top left corner, you got Facebook, mm-hmm. and your thumb and your brain is just like wired, but like, yeah. just do it. <laughs> and it's crazy, because of what he posted on Instagram that day, about just simply moving the app to a different place in your phone, like that eliminates a lot of time that you spend, because like uh-huh. sometimes like you don't even want to look at Instagram, you just find yourself opening your phone and going to it. And so I... Just I, it. <laughs> so one day I organized my phone, I put all my, like, my social media in like one little you know pod and then my like you know sports apps and another pod and I did that <laughs> so all my apps were everywhere and it's crazy like when I'll be sitting there bored like watching you or something and you just open your phone and like you slide and like I click and it's not there and you're like well I'm not gonna go to Instagram so I don't want to but it's just crazy to see like so it made you like stop and think right? yeah oh and you I stop don't want to go on Instagram right now <laughs> and then you stop and think and you realize like just doing that it shaves off how much time you know and screen time I mean it is really cool they came out so uh, something like a cool insider that me and my girlfriend do now we we set like a limit you know it's like for me I try to spend less than 30 minutes a day on social media um, <clears throat> you, you set a, like a limit mm-hmm. to where like once you hit 25 minutes it'll say okay you're 5 minutes from that 30 you minutes you say directly on the app wait yeah. what so I've not seen that yet yeah you go on the app and you set a limit so say like I only want to spend 30 minutes a day on social media so once you hit that 25 mark minute mark <clears throat> it'll tell you and they said you know you only got 5 more minutes for the wow. day and then once you hit that 30 minutes, it'll lock you out. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, you can go back in and delete the limit and you can get back in there. But for me, I set limits on all my apps. So once it locked out, I was pretty good about, okay, I'm locked out. I'm not, I can't go back in there. Mm-hmm. And it helps out. You know, I try to keep my screen time under an hour and a half a day. Wow. You know? Smart. Because, <laughs> I mean, it, just, it helps, dude. I mean, like you said, we're becoming so addictive and so, like, obsessed with our phones. Everybody's so locked into what's going on on the screen, you know, and everybody's missing around, you know, missing what's going around them. But, you know, you, you set those limits, dude, it, it helps. And I bet, I bet somebody, like, if, if they're listening, like, third-person point of view, they're like, my God, like, an hour and a half. But, like, they might be spending, like, two hours without even realizing it. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're listening to this right now, I mean, go. It tells you every single day. I think at midnight it restarts. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> and see how much time you're spending on your phone. You'll be mind-blown. I mean, because you got to think, even if you're just, like, reading a simple story or something, um... You know, it, it all adds up every second that you're, like, on your phone. And another thing it does is, like, phone pickup. So it tells you how many times in an hour you pick up your phone. Oh, mm-hmm. dude, that's the worst. So oh, then you're like, holy crap, that. I picked up my phone that many times in an hour? And it's like, you know, it's a reality check. It's like, okay, I got to, you know, I got to start living life outside of this thing. I mean, like, that is such a, like, such a <laughs> common reaction that we have when we're outside of our comfort mm-hmm. zone. Like, think about being in public and you know like you walk down like you know like the same hallway as someone or you know like Mm -hmm. it's like one-on-one traffic or like you step into an elevator like what's the first thing everyone does like you reach into your pocket and like you know like you like you like you pull it out it's like it's like a a piece of comfort for you and yeah you know i mean it's taking away from you know, just genuine like human interaction, man. Like, like from being able to look somebody in the eye and say, "Hey, how's it going?" Like, that is something that is 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 quickly going away. Like, yeah. Oh, and what's man. really cool, like me and Kim, every night before we go to bed, we look at our our screen times. <clears throat> it's something we actually are doing right now. You know, we compare them, and like if we have an in, like a inside bed, I'm not gonna you know put that out there for everybody. Know <laughs> what the punishment is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but if somebody goes over that set limit we have for that day, uh, then that you know that person's got to sacko up. But I mean, it's sacko cool to do. You know, it's really cool to do. I mean, obviously, you know, every now and then you'll watch Netflix and you'll rack up like three hours watching Netflix. But 
We, I mean, I don't count that as much. Oh, time. that's all screen time. That's all screen time. Oh, wow. But, we'll, but it'll tell you. So like, it tells you down to the second how many minutes you spend on what app. Uh -huh. So if I show her my phone, it's like I spent like five and a half hours screen time today. But like, okay, look, I spent four hours on Netflix. Hmm. You know, then we'll take four hours off. Uh -huh. Or like, you know, when we're driving, going somewhere, we've got GPS and it counts out of screen time. You know, it's 40 minutes on GPS. You know, take that off. But, right. But yeah, it's definitely something, dude. I mean, if you're not doing it now, definitely do it. I mean, it helps out a lot. And it's. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like you can't go throughout college right now without, like, I don't know. My, my roommate pointed this out to me. He's like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to go sit on my phone for a little bit. So then I go to class. And I guess class, you don't use, like, too much screens or anything. But then, then from there, I'm going to go study, go stare at a screen. Then, like, I'm, I, and then my reward is to come back home and play video games and then yeah. fall asleep watching TV. It's like, like, I'm literally sc staring at screens all day. I was like, dude, that's a good point. It's just different types of screens. That's all day long. It's really wild to think about. So that's something that I, I think the iPhones and, like, the Macs have where it's called night mode where you can turn on... Uh, it, it like, is the blue light in your phone or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the blue light blocker. So essentially what they found is is like that blue light explosure, like it it, it resets like, like the way that your brain perceives like day and night. So it messes up your circadian rhythm and you know, too much like blue light exposure can like make you have insomnia or it can make you like you know, yeah. you know not fall asleep and, and that's and that's another topic I'm going to get into is like the ties between because now you know with the, all this technology and phone use social yeah is it a reason why mental health problems are becoming such a big deal you know Absolutely. as far as you know phones and social media and like all this stuff is it is it tied to why we're having more health mental health problems now than we ever have mm -hmm. and it's just one it's just some, something to think about it's like it's crazy right man and I mean like, like the whole like, like the whole purpose or well not the whole purpose but like what you see for the most part on social media is like the highlight of everyone's life yeah and 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 you you I mean people are compare or no, I'm not sure what I was trying to say people are you know they compare themselves um, you know like regardless of you know like if you try to or yeah. not like you see something and you know like you see a picture of somebody traveling the world like Oh, I I would like to do that. Like you compare your life to that. Exactly. Like, like somebody, yeah. Like somebody posts about their school they're going to or graduate from or their job or their relationship, and you're comparing the same thing. You know, your school and your relationships, your job, it's everything. You're not quite there yet. You know, you're not. You don't have to be doing, but doing exactly what they're doing. You know, but it's like you said, it's just like the highlight. And when you look at everybody's like accomplishments they post on social media, and you're comparing it to what you're doing now, you know, it can be damper. You dude, know. dude, absolutely, and I mean, like you've got these kids who, well, I mean, I don't want to say kids because, like, now I feel like it's it's it's, it's it's millennials now that you know, like us. Uh, oh, it's the kids doing this now. Like they I didn't grow up with this, but I mean that's another topic. But we didn't have Chromebooks in the classroom. So. Yeah, dude, we didn't have Chromebooks. So, uh, we didn't have. We know, can say kids. You know, yeah. we were like the we, last. We actually so, got a, we, we were the first. You guys did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we were one year behind. So you guys, I was the yeah. last class and never. Had them, so I can say I didn't. I didn't. We weren't given Chromebooks, so so we were that that generation. So I tie in. Uh, people are older than me, but all no. they did was distract me. By the way, that's, that's <laughs> oh, all yeah. those things were. I see kids in classrooms now. It's crazy. It's insane. But yeah, man, it's just like you just see the highlight reels, and you know, too many people are afraid to be. You know, vulnerable on social media, and and you know, <laughs> no and, gonna I mean, post their problems, right? Yeah. And there are you know, like some people on social media who are trying to fight the good fight, who you know, like they might have a a, a giant following of people, and they'll be you know, like they'll post the good stuff, but they'll also post some bad stuff and be like, look, like it's still real life, like I have the same problems as everybody else. Yeah, but I like know, that fight the good fight, I like right? That. You know, like mm -hmm. I feel like. If, if you're a person that kind of has that that massive following, I feel like that should be part of it, man. Like you know, like you can't just keep feeding off of people's, you know, their their willingness to just you know tap twice. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, you need to you know produce some real stuff out tap there. Tap twice. I'll yeah. Do you think there's even like a counterculture to this? Because like I think a lot of people kind of hate the fact that like the Kardashians are famous. You know, like, just the no. fact that, like, how famous they've gotten in <laughs> That's not a topic I want to get into, but, yeah, it's, it's insane. So, like, do you think there's going to be, like, a counterculture to where, like, uh, 
Like, I don't know if you guys know who like Joe Rogan is at all or like love, love Joe Rogan. Yeah, okay, absolutely, he's a huge absolutely. Rogan guy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he's kind of like the counterculture. Yeah, right? and I, this is actually just clicking in this moment. But like, like I feel like like keeping it real and like just doing like like objectively trying to help people and yeah, and, man. and we need people like that who are doing the exact yeah. opposite of what the Kardashians are kind of pushing. Because the Kardashians are, like, creating this unreal expectation that you're never going to live up to, that you're always going to feel, like, unsatisfied. Feel inadequate. And yeah, man, like, I, I feel like it's it's so important that, like, you know, people like Rogan or, you know, whoever it is, like, they keep it real. And, like, that's why, peop- you know, some people don't like him, man. Like, you know, but he will say exactly what he wants. Like, people like Rogan, they encourage, like, you know, free thought, free expression, like, you know. Well, people don't like, like free expression nowadays? Who would have uh, thought? I mean, I guess it's well, <laughs> free expression, you know, free expression until Free expression it, doesn't exist anymore. Though. You know, free expression unless it goes against my views. I mean, you know, that's what, <laughs> that's what <laughs> Unless you offend me. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can't like, say it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, dude, like, keep it real. real. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, yeah. we do have some interesting topics on here, man. Let's hit what some of these for What about success? Everybody has their own definition. What what would you guys say? Like subjectively for, speaking, like how would you define success? For me, um, you know, for me, I just strive as the prototypical just American dream, man. Um, I mean, dude, it's not about money at all. It's not about the things you have. Uh, I just want to live the American dream. I just want to have a house, a job, and a family, dude. And it's crazy to think that we're 24. We're yeah. getting there. We're doing adult things now. I mean, I have own, my own house now. Uh, you know, uh, job. It's just, it's insane. But, you know, you don't, have to, don't have to have the nicest things. You know, it's, I just want, you know, the simple stuff, dude. Just be happy. Living in the moment, you know. Being able to enjoy life with the people around you. And that's what it's about for me. That's just working hard every day. That's, that's my version of success. What about you? I mean, absolutely. And, you know, a big part of that you said was was being happy and you know I feel like the best way to be happy (coughs) sorry I was the beer (laughs) you know I I I feel like the best way to be happy man is to know that you gave it your all man like you know like you hang your hat at the end of the day and you know that you did you know I mean you pursued excellence to the best of your ability Um, you know and, and I feel like if you do that day in and day out and you you know, like your core value is to, you know, p- like pursue excellence to the best of your ability, and you know, to to be available for people, and uh, you know, to give as much as you can to other people. Like you will find success in return. Like you know, that I mean, like, like that's just the way it is. Yeah. Like I mean, you, like you make yourself available. You try to you know provide value to as many people as possible, and you know, just reach people on a person to person basis. Like you're going to find some success, man. Like, you know, it's, you know, like it's not that you just chase success. Um, find happiness too. (laughs) Right. It's like you, you just, you chase trying to give back to others and do the best you can every day. And, you know, success and happiness will be a reward of that. Yeah. Throwing it back to our last time. Did there ever come a time where you guys think you'd ever delete social media? Will there be a point in your life where you just feel, feel no use for it anymore? I always thought, felt like I felt like I outgrew Twitter a little bit. <coughs> after, I don't get on Twitter anymore. Yeah. After college and like after graduating and being done with baseball and everything, uh, I, I think I kind of outgrew it. You know, um, there's nothing you're gonna see on Twitter that you, you can't see anywhere else. So I got rid of that. But I mean, as far as Instagram and you know Facebook, I feel like Facebook will always be something. But I mean, and you know, and some of the other apps. I mean, how do you guys feel about that? It's, I've always felt like I wouldn't have. I th- okay, so I'll say this. I think I get on too- Instagram too much as mm-hmm. it is, but I've always felt like if I wasn't pursuing this, like I guess you'd say, like social media route or whatever, like with like the podcast mm-hmm. and and whatnot. And then I, like before I was on Vine for a little bit, like Vine. if I if I wasn't like trying to like right. I guess kind yeah. of uh, recipes. I guess try. I don't want to say win the game, but like benefit from the game of social yeah. media. Yeah, I guess it's different for you guys because you guys are in the business of where social media is almost in your job description as far as reaching to an audience. Uh-huh. You know, uh, trying to get your product out to more people. What you said you got? Are you in marketing as well? <coughs> well, he's, and you know, 
athletic, athletic training. So I mean, it's just kind of so, so that's the, yeah, okay, yeah, so it's necessary. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, as far as so, you know, reaching you know, yeah. So like in our baseball facility, man. Like I mean, if someone's you know throwing some cheese and you know like you can you really record it. I mean, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, if someone's throwing yeah. up triple digits on the radar gun, that's cool as hell to see somebody crow. I mean, you're hunter. definitely gonna pull out the phone and you're gonna record it and yeah. you know, I mean that's a way to validate like your product and stuff and yeah. you know like for, like, 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 for, like for me personally like you know Twitter's big in terms of information man like there's a ton of uh, you know people on the baseball front who are posting you know great content and I mean me you know like you can reach out to people on Twitter and learn from people on Twitter um, you know and, th- and that's pretty much the you know, capacity that I, I use the Twitter app is to learn and connect, you know, with other coaches and kind of, you know, talk training and whatnot. Um, it's updated information too. Yeah. Like pace. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's, you know, like the good information finds a way to stick around on the internet mm-hmm. where like the bad information, uh, you know, people will find it, troll it and I mean, it'll get deleted. So <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. I'm, not, I'm kind of the same way. I just like, like naturally like gravitated or, like away from Twitter, but I don't I don't know why that is necessary. Like I pretty much never use it anymore. I mean, this is like this is only like a month old, but it's been like a gradual decline probably yeah. over, over the past like excuse me like six months. And I, I don't know why that is because I, I really like Twitter. I like the con the concept of Twitter a lot. But I'm slowly, and I, I think Twitter is probably the most like beneficial for like. If you follow, like, the right accounts, you can get, like, the right information versus, like, all the others are more of, like, a social kind of deal. Yes. Uh, Dude, to that point, man, like, people that always complain about your social media being, you know, oh, you know, it's so negative. People are always, like, fighting, debating. There's negativity. Like, you choose who you follow. Yeah. Like... Like, yeah. like, 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 Twitter can be awesome, man. Like, you can follow the funniest content in the world. You can, you know, I definitely follow, disagree with that. With the the like, negativity, yeah. I don't see very much of that. There is a follow or unfollow button. That, yeah, like I have definitely heard people rant about. Oh, I hate seeing, you know, yeah. like you know, political stuff or whatever it is. Like, okay, if you don't want to see that, unfollow it or don't, you know, subscribe to, to, you know people who you're friends or friends with that like that post that stuff like guess what you don't have to be you know facebook friends with someone just because you went to high school with them like and you like it, it, if you don't like the stuff they post like you can unfriend that but people take that so seriously like, oh dude you unfollowed me like or, uh-huh. like like you like you don't want to be my friend on facebook like no like we can still be friends but i don't like to be friends with you on social media <coughs> Yeah, yeah, like that's yeah. such a weird concept. You know, there's things so like you can be friends with people on Facebook, but you don't have to follow them. Mm-hmm. So there are people that I'm actually like still like, you go on like you know I'm just friends with them, but I don't see their 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 posts or their notifications or anything like that. So I unfollow them. There's people that can do like that too. So they don't take it the hard way. They have no idea that that's I don't beautiful. Follow them. Exactly. Yeah. I like they that. have no clue that I don't see their stuff, but because they post, they share twelve things a day. But oh, that's. But they're still, but they don't get butt hurt because there, there's some like really me. awesome people that just like to use social media that way, and it's like, yeah. okay, you're a really cool in person, but like you kind of suck online. Dude, these people are sharing stuff all day. I was like, how do you find the time? Uh-huh. It's, 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 it's crazy to me, but who knows? We go on all day about social media. Let's... <laughs> yeah, we gravitate towards the air away from that. Okay, if you could send a message to the entire world in uh-huh. 30 seconds or less, what would you say? Let's Man. do a loose thirty seconds. So just uh, just like the core principle of like a short message to the world. Oh man, for me, short for me, it would just. I mean, it's gonna be cheesy, but uh, just never give up, dude. I mean, <laughs> you're hitting me. You really just said that. But dude, seriously though, I mean, yeah. There's a phrase that I've since my baseball playing days that I've always gone by is trust the process. I mean, stuff might not be going how you want it to be going right now. <laughs> But if you continue to put in the work, the effort, wake up every day with a purpose, you know, it's stuff, good stuff's going to happen to you. I mean, I'm a firm believer. I've struggled with things lately. You know, it's just you got to you gotta wake up every day with a purpose, with, you know, the right mindset, you know, and just get up and get after it. I mean, just because you're not where you're at right now, it's not, gonna, it's not where you're going to be, you know, 10, you know, 5, 10 years down the road, you know. What you do now pays the way for where you're going to be in 5, 10 years. So, I mean... So do you have any tips going off of that to like 
build resilience or like to kind of uh, be able to kind of push through like any any struggle or anything like whenever times do get tough I mean what, that, that's kind of a broad question tough. but it is broad I mean like I said for me just staying like when times do get tough just staying mentally strong dude I mean just finding ways to not think about it you know uh for me, it just be anything outdoors. I like to get away. I like to go out to my farm, my land, shoot guns, drive four escape. wheelers, fish, yeah. do stuff like that. I mean, don't trap yourself and just being overwhelmed. Oh my God, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Because uh, I mean, you will be. Definitely. Just trust the process, man. I mean, it's gonna work out. You know, there's a rhyme and reason for everything. Just keep plugging it. That's that's my advice for, you know, everything. So. Dude, absolutely. And. To that point, you know, kind of piggybacking what you said here, like, it's so easy for us to get overwhelmed and, you know, to feel, you know, feel stress or anxiety just because, you know, like, to a certain degree, we, you know, we're, we're, like, we're creatures of habit. We kind of do the same things generally day in and day out. Like, Absolutely. Like, I mean, when you're feeling that way, like, the best way to kind of break out of that you know, fog or, you know, like that stuff that's weighing you down, like do something outside of your comfort zone, like get way outside of your comfort zone. Like, man, like I, I feel like people are so caught in a bubble. Like, like it's just, hard to like get, like implement the imagination to be like, what should I do? That's just like way different too. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to do that like somewhat consistently, especially whenever I fall into like a groove where I'm like, kind of bored with life I'm like what can I do that either I haven't done in a long time or like <laughs> what's something I never have tried before dude it's life man I mean I know it's hard but just not being in a routine every day I mean switching things up yeah, it's hard like keeping things yeah, fresh absolutely I mean, obviously you gotta go to work you gotta pay the bills you gotta make money but you know you don't have to come home and do the same routine every day you know I mean, be spontaneous dude just switch it up dude stay out late before you gotta go to work just do stuff to just you know you don't gotta go to bed at eight to thirty every single night. You know, like just this little thing. I mean, and if you are gonna be like more routine, if that's yeah. how you choose to live your life, like how can you make your routine more fun? Like, or like exactly. at least more enjoyable. Yeah. Like, no one wants to just <laughs> punch a time clock all day, come home and sit around, and then just to wake up and do it again. I mean, what kind of life is that? I mean, mm -hmm. and you don't want to be somebody that lives for the weekends. You know, like it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but you're just dying for Friday. You don't want to be that person. I mean, live for Tuesday, live for Wednesday. You know, it's those days you're not that gonna get right those, there, my friend. You're not gonna get those days it's my back, biggest fear. <laughs> exactly, it's literally yeah, my man. biggest you, fear. You don't want to, you know, be that person, you because you're never gonna get those days back. If you're living for three days a week, but you're wasting four days a week every week, dude. I mean, how many days a year are you wasting? And mm -hmm. add that up to a lifetime. And those those days are never get back. So I mean, it's just something to think about, dude. It's that's the kind of the approach that I try to take. You know, dude, absolutely. Oh, wait, okay. All right, so message to the world. Let's like bring that all back. Uh -huh. you know, but, you know, I, I think that was a a great point, man. Um, a little more than thirty seconds, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys get the gist. You can yeah. paraphrase that however you want. Play the podcast in two times speed. It's probably thirty seconds. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Play, yeah, three times speed, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is. Just never give up. Just never, <laughs> <laughs> never, never give up. <laughs> never give up. Do your best always. Uh, uh, so I would guess mine would be, um, you know, don't take things so seriously. Like, you can disagree with someone and it's going to be okay. Like, you can, you know, have polar opposites in terms of, you know, beliefs and ideologies and, you know, like the way things should work. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, I mean, I'm a human. We're all humans. I, uh, I mean, I hope, right? I mean, I, I would assume you're human, but uh, I think I am. Yeah, I mean, I mean, can Maybe. you actually sure? Or we get a simulation? Or <laughs> I don't want to assume anything in yeah. 2019. But, <laughs> but no, like, are you assuming I'm human? <laughs> I'm are, you, are you assuming my personal identity right now? Like, no, that's on, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, like you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like we all have common ground. Like you know, we can disagree, but you know, I mean, we can all come together at the end of the day and. Um, you know, kind of relate on that. Like, you know, things aren't as serious as, as you know, like the media will tell us they are. Like, I mean, there are good people in the world. There's caring people in the world. You know, I believe most people are good. I think that's a country song. Like, Luke Bryan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, like. 
don't take things so seriously. And I think that, you know, I mean, like you can apply that across the board. You know, it's your yours. Don't take yourself too seriously either. I, At, I like that. Amen. Amen. Love that. Love that. 30 seconds or less. Uh, I, I, I really like both those answers, honestly. I like both those answers. I feel like I should, but I don't. I feel like I, whenever I write these questions, I should be like thinking of like, so like what's my answer to this? But I, <laughs> I don't. So uh, I, don't, I, I think passion's really important. At least like subjectively speaking, like me, myself, I know like I'm a lot happier whenever I'm like passionate about yeah. what I'm doing in life. So at least me, like I try to implement as many things as I can be like passionate about into life, so like like hobbies, uh, good relationships, uh, I guess friends, family, I guess that fall under good relationships, but I don't know, just uh, stay passionate, stay humble while simultaneously remaining confident, love and uh, stay excited about life, I guess. I love that. Yeah. I am ways to switch it up, like, you know, and I feel like you really find the things you're, you know, passionate about when... You know, you try new things. You might hate something. Well, mm -hmm. good. You got an opinion about it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and you're going to be like, okay, well, I hated that. And then you're going to remember what you do like and what you are passionate about. I mean, dude, that's something I picked up working some, some like, nice and crappy jobs back in the day, man. Like, I mean, you know, me personally, I poured some concrete and I, you know, I did some carpenter work for a while. and But that's rough. I hated it, man. And, you know, like some people love it. I mean, that's the way their brain works and love like to work with their hands. Like it wasn't for, like, like for me, but, you know, I hated doing it. Guess what? That gives me a whole new perspective on, um, cause I'm, like, because I remember thinking like, man, I hate working this summer job, but I'm definitely not going to complain about my, you know, class at 8 a.m., you know, in college <coughs> because I remember how much I hate doing this. Yeah, uh -huh. It still is a work ethic, man. Yeah. At least it's That's not true. this. Yeah. It could be that. It could be waking up at four o'clock like you did. I remember that. Yeah. That waking was up at four o'clock every day. So much respect to those guys. Drive man. all like, the way out to East Jesus. Dude. I've been in your shoes and I don't know how you guys do it. So thank you for yeah for like for doing that because I can't do it. <laughs> respect and also going off the way you were saying before. That's like it, I I really appreciate that approach. Like being able to not take things too seriously and like remind yourself like we're all human at the end of the day kind of mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and just I, I really I really admire like being able to disagree with like objectivity like like to where we can we both it's like okay you see this point of view I see this point of view and it's not like we're being like overly agreeable just to agree it's like hey like we can we can both see each other's points of view no doubt yeah. and I just like that way of thinking because I, I, I don't know especially this is relevant at least me, to me uh, with like women so like I've dated a lot of girls that I feel like they're just like trying to tell me what I want to hear not necessarily what they actually think and like I find that really unattractive I don't know I don't know why yeah. oh yeah they, and I just I like I like uh, just people in general that are they're able to like tell you how they actually feel instead of just like being like overly agreeable with the uh, with what they're stating. And when you find a girl that tells you like that, you marry her. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt. I mean, to your point, man. Like, I feel like that's the problem with with some parts of social media, or or, or just kind of like the culture that's being bred in general, like. We're all being bred to be very, you know, vanilla. Like, like we're all being taught to, hey, like, like you can't stick out because that's gonna, you know, like that's going to upset somebody. Like, you can't say what you feel because that's going to upset somebody else. Like, I, I mean, my dream or like, well, not my dream. That sounds cheesy, but like, what I, you know, wish people would embrace would be, you know, we can all embrace being different. Like, we can all embrace, like, different ideas and, you know, that's, like, that's being real. That Like, that's being authentic. Like, you can't be authentic and agree with everyone or be liked by everyone. Like, you can't do it. Like, like that's craziness. Yeah. Like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, that's kind of like the focal point of what we're talking about, right? No like, doubt. No like, doubt. To, like to embrace diversity instead of like push it away and like just hate on it. Yeah. Like that, it, it, I don't know, like, you, I, yeah, that's pretty much what we're getting at is that diversity is beautiful instead of diversity is like terrible. 
It's okay to be different than the dude sitting next to you, but apparently people... Yeah, let's not mess that wood up, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to break the wood up. Let's see if I can use this can to open a beer. I like it. How I mean, like, looking at the three of us, like, we're like three white dudes. Woo! Right? Got it. I love it. That there was we go. awesome. Cheers to that. Sorry for, us. Sorry for almost taking your eye out over there. <laughs> this corona has been around, man. Duck dip dodge. Duck <laughs> dip dodge diving. We've got yeah. some more. Next topic? Question yeah, mark? I said he's next worst, to worst name to name a child. Oh. <laughs> Anything that was in the 1930s. Yes. I mean, uh, <laughs> when I think of that, though, I think of female names. Like Judith, Edith, Ethel. Ethel. <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> Shout out to Cheryl, Sarah. Barbara. Doris. Doris. I, mean, I don't know what those people are thinking. Gertrude. Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> Helen. Helen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you said Helen. Dorothy. I thought about it. They got thrown a reference and bad news bears. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like male names kind of stick around. Like Tom, that was probably a common name. Bob's been around names. since people were around. Bob, might, <laughs> Bob might not go. Might, might not ever die. I saw, I saw <laughs> something on Facebook. It was like, With Have mom. you ever seen a baby named Karen, or they just appear one day <laughs> and asking for the manager? I thought that was funny. Because have old. you ever seen a baby named Karen? I got a grandma named Karen, but. That's, <laughs> Dude, I, that's a good point. Dude, to this point exactly, so... Karen. So, <laughs> I keep laughing thinking about it. So there was this kid, um, so it's like at our training facility. It's like this kid was probably, you know, 10 or 11 or something. And, you know, like I go up and I meet him. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? I'm Austin. Like, you know, you know, I mean, what's going on? He goes, <laughs> hi, I'm Craig. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, it was like a ten-year-old, like with a fairly deep voice for a ten-year-old. And then he hey, said, "What's up, Craig?" He said his name was Craig, and I was like, "I don't think I've ever met like a young kid named Craig, like ever." Like, I feel like that was just like a name that just like sounds older than it is. You know, don't think. It's, and this guy's been named like Craig for his whole life, but yeah, man, I'm mean, that's, that's awesome. Funny. That's, I mean, that's a good point because you expect them to be older. You expect some of those names to just be older than you. Or like, you know, Sue. Like, <laughs> hi, Sue. Like, you know, you think of like some 50, 60-year-old chick playing bingo. Like, you, like, you don't think of a little 8-year-old mm-hmm. girl. Like, run around Sue. Run right around Sue. Shout out to Jeezy, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, Jeezy. see, I, was, I know it's like an original song called Run Around Sue, but that's the, that's how I know the song okay. is Jeezy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way I know it either. Yeah. Sue. First name's the name of a kid. I feel like anything that's like a real, uh... I I feel like D not and I'm a ambidextrous, but like like multi gendered names or non non gendered names, like I'm not really a fan of those. Like Yeah. There are a lot of names that like I feel like they swing nicely though too. I'm trying to think of uh like an Alex? Alex I yeah, Alex, yeah. Alex or, plays. or or Taylor's like flow both Taylor ways. Both. which is weird. Like those names that go both ways. I mean, like, can we have some different styles? I, I knew back in high school we had. Uh, so like, if you're a dude named Taylor and you start dating a girl named Taylor, like, if you guys get married, you guys have the exact same name. Taylor That's so and weird. Taylor. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. yeah like, Shout yeah. out to Taylor Bechtel or Taylor Winger if they watch this. But remember, they dated back in high school. I remember or something. Oh really? Like, some somewhere down there. Double right? Taylors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they they would have worked it out, and got married. You know, they would have both been Taylor. Well, even, even my name, even like Jordan. There are a lot of like pretty. I feel like it, I feel like it becomes socially acceptable whenever you meet a cool guy named after one name, and then you meet a hot girl named after the other name. Is that right, or is that too out there? I can see it. Definitely. Yeah. So at least mentally, like just to you, you're like, all right, that's socially acceptable now. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's a really good point. <laughs> or like, yeah, like it, like I've never thought like a chick named Blake makes sense, but Blake Lively, all right, makes sense now. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. You know, she's you know she's hot. So. Blake. All right. All right. We'll, we'll let's. All right. We'll, we'll roll with it now. Question. So you, down the road when we all like get married and have kids and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you, you start picking out baby names, your girl comes to you die hard wants to name a kid name, but you have like, 
you've had like a bad beef in the past with a, no. that, a guy that name, or for God's sake, you had a, like one of your your most recent serious ex girlfriend was named that name, you know, and she wants to name the baby that. Like, is that a problem? Well, how does that work? It's a good question. It's yeah. a really good question. I, I, because I mean, I'd be lying if I said to me or my girlfriend talking about baby you, names. And I didn't ask that immediately. I I've know. Been, I've been dead set. I mean, I've wanted to name, name my first kid Carson. I love that name. Uh-huh. But when I was trying to spew that that to her one day, she's like, oh, I dated a guy named Carson. Ow. Well, great. Well, I can't name that kid then. Now. You know, and it's just like, I mean, is that is it? would it be weird, you know? Like, could, uh-huh. you, could you do it? Or no? I mean, it's... it's like then the- you got to go down the road and find names that you never... Either of you have never had, you know... It's just weird. How does that... She's like mentally... Uh, like, just either party either parent has like a negative perception of that name like or just a bad memory of a person like that's, that's why names that's, that's gonna be tough that's why names are getting out there nowadays that's why names are crazy yeah, yeah you hear names you never even knew her name you're like sharkisha sharkisha <laughs> all right getting, getting getting creative here there we go there we go it's, Blaze, little, it's original it's yeah, original yeah. it's unique mm-hmm. it sounds uh doesn't sound white that's so, uh, white. you know don't gen- don't uh no I'm not gender. Don't uh, uh, color my names. No, come on. <laughs> Don't tread on me. Don't, <laughs> Don't, Don't tread on ethnically me. label me. Yeah, ethnically awesome. label my name. Come on. Calm down. Don't ethnically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, though. I, I, what if it's like a... What if you're like really dead set on the name and then it's like a really like a... I don't know, it's really minuscule kind of... Like, oh, I'm after this guy on Tinder, and he said something really arrogant. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, like tell, you, I couldn't tell you 99% of the names of the girls I met on Tinder back in the day. But, but yeah, I mean, I was, like I said, I was dead set on Carson. I loved that name. And then the second she told me that she dated a guy named Carson, I no, no longer had anyone to name my kid that. It, like, it was like that. So, I mean, it could happen for you guys. I don't know, but... That's a good point. It was weird though. I mean, I loved that name. Loved it. Then just no, then no, just, no desire. To gone forever. Same no. See you, Carson. Yeah, That's not Carson. Easy. Carson, this one's for you. You'll man. never. Mind yeah. yeah. taking shots on camera. Can we do that? Or is that no, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Free speech. Yeah. Just let it pour. Next topic. Yeah. Preferred way to die. I don't know if there's a preferred way. Uh, I don't really stay awake at night thinking about this, but um, okay. But it if I had to pick one way, it, it can't be f- like fall asleep, you know, peacefully and just die. Like, mm-hmm. like that's too easy. I like, think. I think. I agree with that. Obviously, none of us have died, so we don't know. But would you think exploding would be painless? It'd be so instant that it'd be painless. Like if you yeah. were to like step on a mine or something and just blow up. Do you think you would even know what happened? You'd probably feel pain, but no, like, there's no, like, uh, I guess, uh, understanding. Of or, like, if you're just, yeah. like, walking down the street and, like, it's sniped in the head. Like, would you feel that? Like, would you know? No, like, I, I feel like you wouldn't. And that's the craziest thing. I mean, this is something every human being has to come to terms with. And it's always something in the back of your mind that you never bring to the forefront because you don't think about it. It's crazy yeah. to think, like, it's crazy to think that humans can do what we do knowing like we're all going to die one day. You're not going to escape it. There's no one that's going to get it. But we can all still be happy, live lives, No, we're not getting out alive. And it's crazy to think that we can do that because at the end of the day, and, it, and it's even more nerve-wracking is, sorry to get deep on you guys, but I mean, you don't know when it's going to come. You could, we, like one of us could be gone tomorrow. And it's crazy to think like how we don't go insane. Mm-hmm. With that anticipation, that, that that wonder, that not knowing when that moment's gonna come and how or how, you know. I feel like that's the reason we don't go insane. Like to play devil's advocate, like I, I feel like we don't go insane because we all know it, it is for everybody. Like, 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 think about it. Only some people live forever. Yeah. Like we, like we would have anarchy, man. Like. That's would have Why them? Why them? Yeah, like, we I, have, like, dude, that, like, that would be wild. Because I know you, you know, we're all gonna be six feet under one day. I mean, we're not, hopefully not at the same time, but, you know, it's gonna come for all of us. I think that that's a good point that he brings up. Is you know, could have been that one night, seven of us. Seven it of could us. have been that night. It could have been that night. Shouts to those. How guys. old were we back then? Do 
Debo, Let's Travis, see. Thomas uh, Dustin. Thomas Dustin. Thomas Dustin. Hope you guys are gonna watch this. This one's for you right here. Mine's empty, but <laughs> one hell of a night. Many of the nights we had back in high school. No doubt. But yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, it, it is being able to accept, um, you know, the end of it, and you know, when we like, we all have that clarity at the end. Like, hey, like we're gonna live for X amount of time. We don't know exactly how much it is, but it's also crazy that we're like the only animals. I would assume that, or you know, like people are, we're are the only living beings on this planet that have an awareness of time. Like, we know that we're going to die one day. Like, we have to make the most of it. Like, I, I feel like deer don't have that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously we can't ask them. I feel like if deer had that intelligence, they would have already plotted against us. And <laughs> Dolphins be a maybe, full man. war. <laughs> Dolphins are super smart. The way, like, the way, the the way our hunters go out and get after deer, I feel like they would have had their, their coming back after us if they had that kind of intelligence. But, yeah. Do you, yeah. think, do you think the survival instinct is like an implication, like to know that hey, we know we're gonna die one day, so our innate desire to like survive and like I don't know, just like surpass any any limitations you're gonna throw at us or any like roadblocks you're gonna throw at us. Do you think that's kind of like an implication of them being aware that they're gonna die, or do you think that that's just like they don't even like logically understand it? They're just like survive. Like real, you hear a lot of noise. Run! Like we're the we're the prey. We're not the prey. I have no idea, but <laughs> dude, I feel like from a biological standpoint, like like the difference between us and the animal world is like we understand why we feel those things. We understand why we we. I mean, because I mean, we have instincts. We have natural, in, you know, like that's intuitions. We have, um, you know, raw emotions that like you can't explain. Like they just are there. But we can actually make sense of them and be like, okay, I feel this, but I can still choose otherwise. Like an animal, they don't have that option. Like they just, like they feel something, they act no matter what that is. Like, and that's just that need to survive and pass on offspring where we have the choice. Like, hey, we actually don't have to have kids if we don't want to, but like in like, you know, like an animal is not going to say, you know what, I actually don't feel like having kids. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they like they have to obey that. Like, I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. How much? How much do you think man can fully overcome his nature, though? That's a deep one. That's like, hard question. Like, like what? Like what nature? Like, like. Oh okay, yeah, so like going off of like like having kids. Like we we may not, or we we can like decide okay do we want to have kids or do we not want to have kids like because we, we kind of get that choice but are any of us actually fully able to like overcome our sex drives like our, our innate desire to want to at least like I mean I, I mean that's the point of sex like to procreate like are, are we able to overcome that I don't think there's I don't think so because there's four things that release dopamine is what is it, sex working out drugs and What's the fourth one? Oh, I remember. Sex, working out, drugs. Good food. Oh, good food. 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 Yeah, that's yeah, right. Food. Yeah, yeah. Those are the f only four things in the world that really? at least don't mean Don't yeah. creates a, an addiction, a habit, a happiness, you know, that feeling, you know. You, I'm going three to four. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, you know, that's that's something that at least, I mean, no, I don't think you can't beat dopamine. Never will. So, I mean... That's how I feel. Wait, so what was it again? Drugs, so sex. It's drugs, good sex, food. good food, and uh, working out. Okay. Yeah. So like physically exerting yourself, like that releases a dopamine response because yeah. you have like, you know, like you tear down muscle. Like you want to feel good afterwards. Yeah. So uh -huh. it's working out. You know, sex obviously. You, you know, like your like, so our bodies are so programmed to reward us for things, right? Mm -hmm. So you know. Sex, obviously, because like you procreate what what nature intended. Like mm -hmm. you're working out because like you exert yourself, like you get stronger. You, you know, like you are like, like you get rewarded for that. Yeah, you know, like food, like the same way. Like, too. Yeah, exactly. And you know, like what about like accomplishing something? You know, like like what about the feeling of like yeah, being, I would say overcoming that. something, and you're like like wow, like I can't believe I did that homework assignment or. For me, I'd say it's pretty damn close. I would put that to number five. 
there was a fifth category for me. It, just that, that feeling of accomplishment feels so damn good. Some of the it's best like, feelings I ever had in the world were like after a good outing in baseball. Yeah. You know, like but, accomplishing something, going out there. Or would that be categorized as working out? Or would that? But that might not be like, I don't know, a, a biological thing though. Because like, you know, say like an animal, they wouldn't know that they worked for something. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they, you know, like they can't delay gratification to work for something for a long amount of time and have a an end goal for that, right? Like, uh-huh. But I feel like like those four things earlier, like they would be things that are biological in nature, right? Yeah, that's a good point because you you could attribute like graduating college to like uh like that delayed gratification as right. well, which because I mean most people they don't really like the school part and all that. I mean like yeah. Just, I don't know anybody who's like, yeah, school. Like, Joe, yes, you know, to study tonight. Yeah, he's to go study. Like, it, I don't know. Like, pretty much everybody kind of hates it, and everybody just kind of works through it. But that that feeling on the other side of getting through something they didn't like doing with like the reward of that delayed gratification. It's like cool. Like, yeah, like that's, 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 a, that's a feeling out. of accomplishment. <laughs> Yo, that's very nice. It's very nice. Very <laughs> <laughs> nice. How much? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Oh, that's a top ten movie. Oh, yeah, that's a question. What, what, if you guys had to say like three quick, three movies of all time. Oh man, that's, that's a hard, hard question, but it's a good question. For me, it's always my number one, regardless. It's always Saving Private Ryan, number one, always. Um, that's so funny you say that because I, I just, uh, I, I, so I like started like a side podcast on my own, like for like a, I guess like because I got the mics and I was like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, I'll just start like a little side one where I just talk to like the camera myself. So with that being said. Uh, one, I was like kind of doing like a little rant on people that make fun of you for like, I mean, we've all been there, like to the, the to where you're in the social interaction to where somebody's like kind of uh, making fun of you for not seeing a movie. And I was like, oh, I was yeah. like, what's a movie I haven't seen? And Saving Private Ryan is the movie like I came up with. So, yeah, that's that is my movie, man. That's my number one. I showed him that movie. You did way back in the day, whenever that was. But yeah, it's and the two and three, man. I don't know. I'd probably try to hit each category. So I got war. I need to meet. I need to see I, that movie. A comedy, sure. man. Oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like Step Brothers. Dude, I was I just like, thinking Step like Brothers. Step Brothers as one. You can quote that entire movie, man. That, like, it might not be everyone's favorite movie, but everyone knows quotes from Step Brothers. Like, I feel like I mean, Step like, Brothers and Hangover are probably the Hangover, best comedies. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, there's just so many great quotes in those. Um, I'll tell you what, a, a movie. Uh, I guess it'd be drama. I don't know if you guys have seen Southpaw. Southpaw. Yeah, yeah. Southpaw. Spectacular. It's a boxing movie. Spectacular. I mean, Rock, I mean Jake Gyllenhaal. I love the Rocky movies. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome in that movie. His wife. Uh, I think I was getting that confused with a different movie, actually. Yeah, it's, well, yeah Jake Gyllenhaal's wife gets killed. And uh, he takes vengeance against the people that kill his wife. But That's good. In a boxing man. It's awesome. Awesome stuff, dude. He's a good actor besides Brokeback Mountain. This, uh, that I mean that but, might make him a better actor just because like he he's well rounded he's well rounded man he's, he's like, been there he's was like two two gay cowboys or something is that right and they're having butt sex yeah yeah, yeah. cowboy butt sex. it was there it was, you know, it was there adaptable no one's getting my Family Guy reference all right, all right. <laughs> no no no, 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 no I wouldn't get it no okay that's embarrassing I don't know yeah I would say those no. I'm just going man yeah. same Brian Ryan Step Brothers and uh, South Park I'm saying my top two I'm a big fan of Friday Night Lights, man. I love the Friday Night the Lights movie? movie. Yeah, like, like the, I mean, you know, like the TV show is great, but I, I mean, I saw the movie first. Yeah, love the movie. The movie's great. Great. The show's movie. great. Movie's great. See, I feel like I'm terrible with like top three this, and I feel like it's just you know my, you know, not not being able to definitively make an answer on something that is like I'm sticking to this. But uh, Friday Night Lights definitely up there. It's probably a maturity thing because, like, what I noticed is, like, when I was younger, like in middle school, I used to love ranking my friends. You know, like I used to. I think MySpace. Yeah, I know. I think that was. Talks. I think that was a product of MySpace because I took mm-hmm. that so seriously. But like now, I'm at the point, I'm like, I'm like, I don't really think I have like one best friend. I don't think I have like a top five best friends. Like I have like these really awesome friends over here and then I got like good friends over here but yeah I don't, I don't necessarily like rank them you know yeah yeah absolutely I feel like it's definitely a, a maturity thing you know to your point like 
you get different things from different groups of people. Like, you know, like, I mean, we talk about shared energy. We talk about, you know, like the way that you vibe with someone, you know, taking out, taking out all like the hippie stuff, you know, from it. But like, I mean, you definitely vibe with certain people, you know, to a, t a, t a different level than you vibe with other people. Absolutely. And like, you kind of, you know, like you would crave certain people's energies, you know, at certain times in your life and you crave other people's energies. It's just, you know, what you need at that time. Like, you know, like it's not just being able to say, like, you're my best friend, like, no matter what, like, mm -hmm. you know, like it's being able yeah. to, you know, like, well, I, I, I to recognize, like, here's what I get from this person, here's what I give them, like, yeah. you know. I mean, like, yeah, we used to live together, now we live a little bit over an hour apart now, I mean. Yeah. It's just oh, you guys live in, you're an hour from here? Yeah, right? it's, yeah, so I live in Clayton or Towntown STL, baby. Oh, really? The Lou, from the Lou. And I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I'll probably get him to stick around and drink some beers after this stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, might have to stay on the couch, actually. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're out from, like, right around here, so. Yeah, so, like... yeah, yeah, so funny story. So I grew up in Wright City, actually. Which is where he lives now. Where we technically are right now, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Wright City. He grew up in Winsville. Um, and then now, like, so like, so I was the country boy, and he was the kind of, you know, suburbs guy, you know, growing up. And now we kind of, like, switched where he's the country guy, and I'm the, <laughs> you know, city boy, so to say. <laughs> kind of Quote, like, unquote. You know, it's kind of rough. That's funny. Made, you know, it's a, it, I mean, the rough. A running joke at this point. Hey, the you know, guy can still bring in some hogs though from the pond, so that's all that matters. Oh, I mean, I'll, <laughs> I mean, I'll rip some lips sometime or two. I mean, <laughs> what, what do you mean hogs in the pond? Oh, some pigs in that. Okay. That was out our farm, yeah. We got there's some hogs in there. We'll bring them in. There you go. That's fishing, yeah. baby. Bass fishing, you know. Bass fishing. Bass. Bass. Sometimes cats. Sometimes <laughs> cats. Yeah. If we get lucky. If we get lucky. Not not purposely, but yeah. No what blew my mind is about fishing is like that it's not. I, I just would have assumed it's all luck. Like, no man. No, that's crazy. crazy. There's there's an art and a skill to it. That's for that's sure. Crazy. That's man. for damn sure. I mean, I mean, people people would say you know like you know blackjack's all luck. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, to a certain degree, there is some luck. Absolutely. But it's knowing how to play the table. It's well, isn't there a little luck in everything, though? There's a little luck in everything. I Maybe that, you huh? totally control your destiny everything. All right, all right. Do you guys believe in, like, I mean, do things happen by chance? Or, like, is everything designed to fit together? Like, oh, I like that question. Like, 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 let's go. Like, I mean, let's hear it. Man, over an hour we're getting deep now. I got it. Uh, I would say, for me, I would say everything's designed to fit together. Without a doubt. I would say so, I mean, like, that's, just, like, that's just a part of my faith, though, is why I believe that. I mean, I mean, so I would agree to that, like, like mm -hmm. to the same point, like, I mean, you know, um, you know, faith's a big part of it, and, you know, like, if, if you believe in God, God or not, I mean, um, you know, to the same point, it's, you know, a structure to the universe, a structure to the way all things work. Um, what's your take? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say because, like, the things out of your control that are still, like, irrefutably having, an, like, an impact in your life, mm -hmm. it's like, who's to say, like, these were meant to happen yeah. Yeah. for you? Like, like think yeah. about, uh, I don't know, like, an opportunity might open up for you guys right now that because, uh, I don't know, like, out, out here, this branch just lost an employee then it opened up an opportunity for you like are you going to argue that's destiny for you to like to move in on that job like that's where you were meant to be or and I feel like and I, yeah pick me up like you make your own luck too so to speak uh, you just can't sit around and <laughs> hope the good things are going to come to you know you go out there you, you put your face in the right spots you know you shake the right hands you do what you got to do and you know then things you know will come around I don't you know I get what I'm saying, but yeah, kind of like, that's kind of like, do feel. everything you can in your possible, like, yeah, in your control to reduce as much uncertainty as possible. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, Just putting yourself in the right situations, you know. All right, all right. So, have y'all ever heard of like quantum physics or anything? A little bit. All right, right. Like, shit. I've heard of the term. Like, so have you like heard anything about it at all? Because like, because this is something that's pretty new to me, and something that I heard some people talking about on some other podcasts, and. I mean, like, it's definitely some stuff that's got me thinking, but, like, 
and here's kind of like my basic understanding of it. Um, you know, like I, I have not really, you know, jumped into the deep end or really, you know, went down that rabbit hole yet. But here's kind of like what I've collected from what people have told me or like what, you know, people on podcasts have said about, you know, quantum physics and like, you know, the connectivity of everything. So basically like, you know, pretty much like the way quantum physics works is that things in the world, you know, pretty much no matter what it is, it's it's all waves, it's all some type of energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, like the heart inside the human body has a a field of energy around it that we can measure. Like, I mean, that's science. If we can measure, t you know, the energy field around the heart. It's crazy. And like, it's crazy. And, like, it has something like a nine-foot radius. Okay, so, like, you know, like, people say, like, think with your heart and not your head. Well, like, your head is logic. It doesn't, you know, have a, a field of energy. Where, like, you know, like the heart, you know, it is, it, it has energy. It has a way to project outside of your body. So, you, like, you project energy and we can all feel it in inside of a room. So think about like, you know, like you talk about, you know, home field advantage for like a, you know, I mean like a football game or a basketball game, right? You know, like some Hilton Coliseum magic, right? Yeah. You know, shouts to the clones at Iowa State. Um, but like, you know, like you talk about like, you know, a, col a collection of people all kind of you know, hoping and wishing and, you know, sharing the same emotions at the same time, like that projects a larger field of energy where, you know, like the players on the field or, you know, who are playing on the court, like they can feel the energy of the crowd. Like it's, you know, like it's not just the yells, but it's, it's feeling what, you know, people yeah. want deeply inside them. And, you know, like, so that's just one part of quantum physics. It's kind of the difference, like, going to the game versus watching on TV. Like, yeah, you absolutely. Go the, you go for the feel, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like you go to be around people and to have, like, you know, connectivity, right? Um, so that's just, like, one example of, like, you know, some, like some quantum physics. So then, like, a, di so a different example that I've heard is, like, you know, you attract things into your life. Like, you... You know, when you have a clear mindset of what you want or like things that you're trying to pursue, say it's that job that you really want and like you're, you know, projecting that into the universe, like you're sending out your vibes and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. like not to get too, um, you know, wishy-washy mm -hmm. or, you know, hippie on some of this stuff. Like, like you project the vibes that you want, like, and, you know, like the energy that you project out, that's what's attracted back to you. So... You know, we've heard it in like psychology terms, like a, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy where, you know, if you constantly believe, hey, I'm terrible at math, I'm terrible at math, I'm terrible at math, like, well, guess what? Eventually, you're going to not try as hard in your math class, and then you're going to be a terrible person at math. Like, that's the way it goes. It makes sense. Like, the exact same thing is true of quantum physics, where if you think like, you know, I'm not going to get a good job. Like I'm terrible at school. Like I can't do, you know, this, this, and this because um, of some flaw I have. Like that's going to become true. Like that's what you're going to attract in your life. I mean, it's the same thing as people that say, you know, I I date the same type of people. Like I, you know, like no matter what happens, like I date people who are jerks or people who are. Um, you know, they treat me the wrong way, like, well, and you keep saying that, like, well, like, you know, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't matter what you believe, if it's God or if it's, you know, a lot of, I mean, if it's the universe or whatever it is, like, they hear that, and that's what you bring into your life. So that's kind of like what quantum, you know, physics is, like, to a certain degree, and, you know, like, there's certainly some more research to be done into it, but, like, it's stuff that you can't measure. And it's just like, like the way that you think about things and how they bring things into your life is, I mean, it's, it seems like a big mind blowing. It's a big part of the premise that you're saying is like the connectivity behind it all. Yeah. And like even the, the mindset that you hold actually has like a tangible result. Yeah. I mean, well, really? wow. I mean, like to a certain degree and there's certain, I mean, like you can hear like Tony Robbins talk about it. Um, you know, he's like one of the big success people and stuff that you can find online, but he'll say like, 
you know, like the type of food that you eat, like that influences your ability to attract energy. So like, you know, people who eat like a, um, you know, like a plant-based diet, like they're, you know, they have the ability to essentially, you know, plants, you know, they're alive, they have energy, like they're, I mean, they have a, a better quantum ability or something that people that, you know, eat primarily processed foods, which is like a different story, but I mean, when like you peel back some of the layers, like parts of it make sense, like, okay, like, you know, you eat things that are alive, like plants, whatever it is, like you take in their energy. It's a more readily available source of energy. Like, I mean, like it's just food for thought. Like I'm not saying that I'm like a, a guru on it or anything like, you know, but it's, it's just something I've heard and I was like, that's kind of interesting. Like I'm going to look a bit more into it. Like. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, it's weird. It kind of sounds like the law of attraction, too, like, kind of, like, generally speaking. It's, yeah. It's basically, like, the the underlying principle of the law of attraction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good way to put it, like, for, like for sure. I, I feel like there's super intertwined, like, you know, quantum, you know, physics and, you know, like, the law of attraction, how they kind of fit together. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, you know, my, my buddy said something, like, what Nikola Tesla said, apparently, it was, like, if you want to understand the universe, it was energy, frequency, and vibration. That's coming from the dude who like created like. I mean, he was pretty much the had a better understanding of anybody, especially way ahead of his time of like electricity and whatnot. Yeah. So it's somebody who understands the natural world that much has like mm-hmm. that. That that's like a quote by him. Yeah. Interesting I mean, to ponder. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like like frequencies and energies like they're all around us like we like you just can't see them mm. but like you know people always talk about that sixth sense feeling like or you know like like some people claim to be like you know they can have visions or they can you know see in the future whatever it is like or even like intuitive like yeah, yeah, like, I, I yeah, like, yeah like they have an intuition about it uh-huh. you know? and like I, I I personally feel like that to a certain degree like your you know the intuitions that you have you know, could be maybe explained by certain parts of, you know, the law of attraction or quantum physics or whatever you call it, like things that we can't measure currently, we don't have the science to do, but it's like, that would make sense, like that we have the ability to, to, you know, feel things that you can't explain. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's, you know, to me, it's or totally even, crazy. Like sitting here, like the three of us, like we're kind of like feeling each other out, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, like, like we're vibing in a room, you uh-huh. know? Like, that stuff is, I mean, that's wild. And, like, you know, you especially hear people say, like, yeah, man, like, my dog likes everyone, but for some reason, like, it doesn't like that person. <laughs> Turns out that person's a, a terrible person, you know, like, <laughs> like later that's in life. Funny. I mean, I remember my sister had a boyfriend, and my my dog liked everybody, for whatever reason, didn't like that guy. Later down the road, we find out he wasn't a very nice guy. Like, hmm. I feel like the dog could read that first. Maybe just the dogs are smarter than us. I don't know. <laughs> the dogs might be ahead of us. It could be that. I don't know. It could be that. There's not even enough credit. I know. Exactly. I mean, they they really have six cents. We don't. We only got five. But yeah, man. There. I mean, there's so many things that we can't measure out there that you know are feeling based. Like, and, you know, I mean, you can just be around someone and it's either you like their vibe or you don't. Like, it's like, and the question is like, how much of an impact do these things that are so intangible and like so basically like un like unperceived by us like yeah by, by our limited sensory factors like how much of an impact does it actually have yeah absolutely and it, it's it's kind of like undeniable that it has some impact like it definitely is impacting us in some way it's just like how much how much and we don't know do you ever wonder, like, like, so somebody living their life over in New York right now, maybe just on the New York Stock Exchange, like, how much are they impacting your life right now? Do you ever wonder about that, or, like... Similar things, yes, mm-hmm. like, where, you know, it, like, they call it, like, the butterfly effect, like, if, you know, like, a butterfly flaps its wings in Japan, like, is there going to be a tsunami? <laughs> is there going to be a tsunami somewhere else in the world? Like, uh, like I mean, like, you never know. Now like, we're getting deep. I mean, like, you That's never know. Deep. That's funny, though. Like, yeah, you I don't mean know. That, that stuff is crazy. Like you don't know. I mean, and maybe like we're all a lot more connected than we think we are. Like I mean, I 
definitely feel like that could be the case. Like, you know, there is so much in this world that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, I feel like it's stupid of us to think that we have it all figured out. It's naive. Yeah. We'll never have it all figured out. We'll never have it all figured out. That's the fun of it all, right? That's the fun, man. That's why we shouldn't take things too seriously. Yeah. You know, we have no idea what's going on, actually. We're like, we're like, we're all just, you know, just on this big rock called Earth, just living day by day, man. Floating through the galaxy, figuring it out day by day, one day at a time. Spinning and floating around the sun. I mean, trying to figure it out, you know. Trying to figure out it, we'll never figure it out. We'll never figure it out. That's fine. Well, you want to hang with this time real quick? Uncertainty. Then we'll baseball, soccer, yeah. Bit. Oh, okay. Okay. we'll finish with that, I guess. Okay, cool. So, like, kind of like what we were talking about before. Like, uh, like it, I figured this would be something like the three it's of us. Heated. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting real. It's getting real. Yeah, yeah. Money to finish. This I figured this would be something we like all. Uh, but you guys probably agree on it, but I probably like disagree. So, what would you say is the hardest sport? The hardest sport, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with that crank the question, then we'll like move into like a soccer baseball debate. But I'd say golf. <laughs> that I You're would going say, golf. I would go hardest overall sport is would be golf. The hardest sport to master, golf. I would say. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean that's just overall. I mean there is a. I don't even know how to say it, but I'm not gonna say golfers are the most athletic by any means, but hardest sport golf. Yeah. That's my answer. Golf. I'm gonna say baseball. Baseball. I'd say I would say probably hockey. Honestly, hockey's the hot. Okay, hockey would be so. I just think a, a lot of uh, a lot of physicality, a lot of like athleticism, like learning how to use a stick, and also at least at least with me, like personally speaking, like just skating. I'm so bad at skating, so it's, I would have to learn how to yeah. like, skate back. Your hand, your hand-eye coordination on skates, uh-huh. yeah, moving true. Like that, that a, speed like with a puck a that small, those pucks are flying around the ice over 90, 100 mile an hour. I mean, and then on top of that, once you figure all that out, you got to figure out the flow of the game. And then you yeah. got you to get like big and bulky and quick. You'd be able to hold your own out there, yeah. So I feel like for baseball, like. You know, most people that watch it, like, so I'll start this by saying, like, so I'm a bit of a baseball nerd. Like, I work in baseball now, like, you know, like post playing days. And, you know, um, you know, so we do a bunch of work with training and development and, you know, data collection and stuff on, on, you know, training baseball players and stuff. And, you know, like, to me, like, you really don't see another sport that people are that close to the human potential for performance. So what I mean by that is you take a pitcher, okay? So pitchers are throwing um, pretty damn near close to as fast as the human body is physically capable of throwing. So Raldis Chapman or, or well, J- Jordan Hicks actually had the fastest fastball in the major league last year, you know, St. Louis Cardinal guy. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So, yes. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, it's pretty good for us. But uh, so you know, he. I mean, you know, had I had a you know a couple of fastballs there about a hundred and five. Okay. So which is you know super fast. So we're dealing in a sport where one, you know, the the tissue loading capacities of, um, you know, like your connective tissue. So say like your your ligaments, um, you know, that hold your bones together. They have a certain max capacity of what they can withstand through, you know, a, a force production standpoint. Okay, so... So damn near maxed out. We're damn near close to the physical limits of how hard a human can throw I love that, by the way. I, I love yeah. just, like, that's my favorite part of sports, is just pushing the human body and your your own accepted limitations to their, like, limits. I, I love that. Yeah. I'll yeah, take. so taking that part into account, okay, like... I, I, I think what science has estimated like the max capacity for throwing a five ounce baseball is from a standstill off a mound, sixty foot six inches. Can I guess? So, yeah, guess. One ten. Yes. Really? Okay. That is correct. So they assume oh, that. So they assume that is the max physical capability of, or somewhere around there. I mean. So that's like, like you gotta be this height, this weight. This not necessarily, and that's uh, like a different conversation of like 
how we get to those max velocities and stuff, but uh, like what's optimal height, what's optimal weight, like how how efficiently do you move, how strong do you have to be, how flexible do you have to, you know, all those things come into account. But so we're very close to essentially how hard a human can throw a baseball. Okay, it's very primal. It's a man that has a rock in his hand, a man that has a stick in his hand trying to hit it. Mm. Okay, so we're so close to the capacity of you know how hard a human can throw a baseball. Also, like you know, like the human eyes have certain limitations of what you can actually perceive, okay? Like how fast it takes you to be able to see something from your eyes and that's relayed to your visual cortex in the back of your head and then for you to even process that information, like the, I mean like the time it takes for baseball to be thrown at a very high velocity to the plate and then for a guy to be able to react to it, mm -hmm. like we're talking, you know, like your brain thinks in judgments, okay? Like in terms of a moving object, it has to make assumptions of where things are going. So when you see guys throwing extremely hard, and now we have the ability through technology to be able to to make pitches that are, you know, say a fastball and a slider look identical for, you know, f like 50 feet of ball flight, and then they move in two different directions, and the brain already has to make an assumption because it's just about too fast to see like you I feel like that has to be the like toughest thing to do in the world so you gotta identify in that moment is this a slider coming at me is this an ethos favorite pitch by the way nice uh, <laughs> I'm pretty ethos <laughs> really? so, so, it's called my curveball but it was an ethos 69 by like hour ethos <laughs> I had one of those like, is this a curveball like you so you gotta be able to identify and like judge like you were saying like in that moment what is this? And then be able to hit it like so it would be faster than a blink of an eye. Oh, okay. So how, how long does it like on average like a let's say a eighty five mile an hour fastball from start to release of the hand to the plate? So eighty five is slow. That's about close to ten miles. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey! I threw eighty five, so I mean I can say it's slow, like. It's slow for today's game. Like, okay. So, like, the average major league fastball is, like, 94. And most major league, you know, people who come out of the pen uh -huh. are 96, 97 plus. Okay. So, those fastballs are, for them to get from the hand to the glove, is less than the amount of time it takes to blink your eyes. So, you, you, you literally can't blink. There's no blinking. You whatsoever. literally can't blink. Okay, and then you and then you have to be able to decide if you're going to swing or not in that moment. In that moment, so and it's reactionary. It's no thinking. It's it's completely like like judgment. Like a, like in that moment, it's almost instinctual. You got it. You got very instinctual. It's it's essentially being able to play the casino odds based on scouting reports, based on you know pitcher tendencies, being able to collect a bunch of data and decide: Am I going to swing or not? Uh -huh. And there's a ton of hitting philosophies that say, you know, most hitters are, you know, yes, 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 and then no at the last second, or there's, you know, people that say you're no, 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 yes, the last second. Okay. Like, <laughs> so if, if you're loving sports, I hope you catch in the last 30 minutes of this podcast, but I'm going to continue. <clears throat> so you think that the inc such an increase in velocity that we've seen over, like, what would you say, the last 10 years or so, roughly? Yeah. <laughs> where everybody is literally sitting 94 plus, would you say that it's ruining the game or would you say it's making it better? Because to go off some stats is last year was the first time in major league history where there was more strikeouts than hits combined through the whole league. Wow. So now <laughs> pitchers are striking out batters more than, uh, you know, they're getting hits. Striking out. That's not just now. It's a strikeout. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about outs. We're talking about strikeouts. Like, not even putting the ball in play. And so you're seeing a lot of the more small ball coming out because guys, you know, guys, the strikeouts are just, now it's just considered, strikeouts is not considered now, you know. I feel like it used to be in, like, the old game, you know, striking out was not acceptable. Now it's, you know, guys are striking out 150, you know, 175 times a year. Mm -hmm. Like, at the plate. So it's just, I feel like, are we coming to a point where pitchers are just going to continue to dominate and is it going to, ruin the game. 
Do you think so? It, or, or, or well, is it gonna, not, maybe not ruin the game, but is it going to come to a point where our hitters going to be able to catch up? Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Because right now we're seeing pitchers dominate. Because now it used to be the, only the elite pitchers in the game had as many strikeouts as any pitch. But now we're seeing if you're not striking out as many guys any pitch, <coughs> that's below average. On average, really? guys are striking out. It's meant like striking out a batter inning on average now, usually. So can I can I add to your question? Yeah. Do you think that adds or takes away from the excitement? As of the a game? fan now, because obviously player, I'm not real, not really in the game now. Uh huh. Um, for me, I was a pitcher, so I love seeing guys come out of the bullpen throwing 98 plus. I love it. I love watching hitters and suck ass trying to catch up to 98 up in the zone. I love uh-huh. it. I also love the lefties coming out throwing 88, 90. You know, with TC running away from right handers. Love that. I wouldn't say right now it's a problem, but that statistic alone of, you know, we had more strikeouts than the hits this year, That's I think that's an alarming, alarming statistic. Okay. And I think that if it continues to build off that, then you might see a problem. And I just want to know, are, will hitters be able to catch up? Or will pitchers continue to just increase and dominate and dominate? Will we come to a point where it's not good for the game anymore? Because uh-huh. pitchers are at a point where they're just, the hitters don't even have a chance. You know? And where's the plateau point too? Exactly. That's what I'm. That's kind of what I'm thinking. You know. So great points there. <laughs> um, so like to start that off, like that, so, like so what you just described, like you know strikeouts, you know the ability to keep guys, you know from even putting the ball in play, like the way the game has gone, like those are the guys that get paid. All right, like you know, like the reason you would play that game for a long time, you know, like the reason you would pursue anything to be good at it is you know to get paid, right? So the guys that get paid strike out the most hitters. It's the way it's always been. The guys that get the big contracts, okay? Like you have this stuff that is tough to hit. You get paid, all right? So that is the way that going. People are training to do that. People are training to, you know, become that mold, okay? I mean, th- I mean, you know, that's through you know. You know, velocity as a pre you know, a prereq, you know, because it's tougher to hit something that moves faster. I mean, that's a no-brainer. And then it's being able to create a, a repertoire around that. Um, but then, yeah, I would also say though that home runs are up, right? I mean, home runs are also up. Like people are hitting absolute moonshot home runs, and we're you know, like we're in the live ball era right now. Like people are smashing home runs like it's not like it's the dead ball era of you know you know previous years in major league baseball um i forget exactly what time period that was but it's before this you know steroid era and stuff um you know don't quote me on that but you know that was a time when you know small ball had to be utilized because you couldn't hit the ball you know 400 feet out of the yard and that's not the way the major league stadiums were designed but you know people pay the big bucks you know, to come see John Carlos stand and hit a 500 foot home run, like that's exciting. Like that's a a thing people can rally around, right? People also get freaking juiced up for strikeouts. Like I would argue that baseball is at a great place because we're seeing the absolute best out of the things that are the most exciting. People are most excited about huge strikeouts in in giant moments where you know the whole you know it's you know it's the ninth inning you know two outs bases loaded huge strikeout like that's the big moment or same thing like somebody hits a freaking jack off the pitcher bat flips like that's awesome like we need more of that in the game honestly like you know that's the places where you know it yes it there are like i mean there are more strikeouts because you know, you're trying to hit the big jacks. I mean, that's what gets people paid is to hit home runs. I mean, like, you look at the biggest contracts, dudes that hit, for the most part, the most jacks. Right? So, you know, the game's evolved to the point and that... just power, I feel like. Like, people are going for home runs now. It's it, because this reminds me of, like, Babe Ruth. Because Babe Ruth was, like, kind of, like, notorious for striking out a lot, but he was also notorious for hitting a lot of home runs. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, like, most part. people are swinging for the fences now. Is that, is that right? Mm-hmm. I would say people are learning a lot more about um, how to swing more efficiently, and as a result, you know the swing that create, you know the swing that's the most uh, optimal is a swing that has kind of like a slide up or cut. I mean, it's like the fastest possible way. To so it's not as accurate. 
It's not that it's not as accurate. It's just that like people are throwing faster and people so, are that much better. So in conclusion to this, you would say that like hitters are going like have, have learned are learning to adapt to the, they are learning the higher to adapt. Bosses. We're just in a a, a period of because history. it used to be it used to be if a guy came out throwing ninety five, everybody's like, okay, this guy's throwing smoke. You right. know, and that was now that's how now average. That's, now we got guys throwing now average. Wow. There's there's a handful of guys maybe they get hit hundred five off the major league and they got to face that. Jordan Hicks is throw 105, diving in. The I mean, I'll tell season. you what, there's a lot more guys in, you know, short season ball or rookie ball who are, you know, fresh out of the Dominican who are throwing faster than guys in the major leagues. They just, you know, it might be 103 off the backstop. <laughs> but, like, I mean, that's the way the game's going, man. Like, I mean, it's super exciting. We're, we're just in a, you know, like an ebb and flow of a time where the pitchers are ahead at the moment. And, you know, I'm sure eventually with, I mean, be it technology, data, I mean, you know, better coaching, like, I mean, the hitters will catch up and they'll dominate for a few years until, like, some more stuff comes out. I mean, that's the great thing about this game. I mean, it changes with uh, how... That camera died. It's, that's no big deal. It, it always dies. So. Poor dead. But, I mean, like, it, <laughs> like, I mean, like it changes yeah, with, uh, with how everything works. I mean, so it, so it, it changes with America, man. Like, nah. I've never thought about baseball this way, but it's kind of like a constant battle between the batters and the pitchers. Yeah, yeah. It's a who who can like, who can gain the edge. Yeah, oh, it's a wow. constant edge. Who can who can get that one leg up, or however you want to look at it. And you know, because of you know, like the stoppages in the game, like you know, people would say it's not much action, like, but it's tension. It's stuff you can you know, like it's stuff that you can feel in the air. Like, I mean, it's not just. You know, all right, we're gonna wait around until the next pitch is thrown. Like there is a bunch of things going on behind the yeah. scenes, but we've been on baseball forever. Like, yeah. but yeah, that's why I think it's like the toughest sport. Like, it was a great argument, though. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I might, I might change my answer to MMA, though. <laughs> I think my, th- I think three would be soccer. It serves in your body to every dude. Yeah. MMA, all the, all the different martial arts you have to learn. That's like, dude. That oh, is yeah. something I've never like done before, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for it. Like, 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 that's primal, man. That's man against, against, your man, dude. Imagine just rushing on your, like, picture of rushing on your body for, or your buddy for 30 minutes and you're winded. Imagine doing that for however many minutes for six rounds or in boxing 12 rounds. I mean, it's insane. Dude, I, I'd say that is, yeah. But yeah. I so, train at like an MMA gym in Lentzville and like it's, it, I pretty much just train with amateur MMA fighters and I pr- I mainly do jujitsu, and that is exhausting. And that's yeah. only jujitsu. MMA is like a whole other element of like striking. Like like boxing tires me the fuck out. Like really quick on, and to endure all of that pain on top of it, it's just like another level. Yeah, that's insane. And like a, like three minutes of rolling in jujitsu is exhausting. Like it's really yeah. really tiring. Oh, I bet. I bet, dude. I can definitely see that. And- <laughs> Joe Rogan's pretty big on jujitsu, isn't he? Yeah, he's a black belt. Yeah, yeah dude, that oh, stuff really? is that dude's like, a badass. Like, like fascinating. Joe like, Rogan's a badass. Something I should jump into here soon. You guys, I think you guys really like it. Honestly, let's try it. We get into. I'm always like hyper like, on like a, I guess recommending it or whatever. But yeah, uh, it's a very, um, very, very, very technical. It's not like you realize like at least I mean I'm, I I don't know shit. I know nothing. Compared to like these like actual guys, but I've done it for what like I think I've done like forty practices of jujitsu or something like that. So like not a ton, but like enough to like have an, a novice understanding of it. And it's um, you, you realize how technical fighting is. Like techni- like I don't see fighting anymore as like brute versus brute. I just yeah, see like, it as like it's all technique. It really yeah, is. That is cool. Yeah, man. Like there, I I feel like there's so many sports and stuff like that that. I mean, you know, we all grew up in a certain bubble of sports. Like, I mean, you know, we were baseball players. I, I played some basketball. I mean, you played some football. Like, I mean, we all grew up in such, like, a bubble of it. But, like, there is, like, there's so many different sports that people get, like, I mean, like, you know, to your point, like, golf. Like, man, there's such a mental, like, I mean, like, the ball is sitting still. But you got to make it go to a certain place, like, but there's, win, like, like there, size, there is size. such a, a mental aspect to it, and being able to expose yourself to so many different, uh, 
you know, realms of sport is huge. I have to pee so bad. I have to piss too. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys eat, you good? Yeah. Cool. How, how long did we go? Hour 45, huh? We got there. Hour 45. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, we got out for the damn thing. <laughs> I love that shit, dude. That was I've gotten better awesome. holding my bladder on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm surprised I didn't want to do because I got piss. Yeah, I, I didn't even think of that. Any last words? Any last words? Thanks for checking in on us. Yeah, guys, appreciate you listening. Um, don't take things too seriously. Never give up. That's the model. <laughs> DJ, right, get out of the closet. Deuces. <laughs> Coming out. He came out of the closet.